God, don't put that on your hand. I hope she's had her shots. The Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel. Too sick for this world, Zachary Wentz. And the Cardiac Kid, Desmond Xavier. And we are The, the Rascals. Rascals. And you are listening to Total Nonstop Impact Podcast, baby. Woo! Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact. Impact Talk for Impact fans featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, along with my co host, Kyle. Kyle, say hello. What a scumbag! Hello? What's That's going it. on, Trent? Oh, well, you know, I was expecting you, you, you fucking throw a curveball at me. I'm expecting you to say, Kyle, say hello to the people. I was going to say hello to the people, drop my sound bite. But you threw, you threw the curveball at me, Trent. I, uh, I, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you, Kyle. I forgot the uh, the people part. It's been, I feel rusty. You weren't on with me last week. I'm a little rusty here, man. I'm used to being alone now, for God's sake. This I, is, uh, I come and go, Trent. This is what I do. I'm like the Artie Lang of the podcast, you know? I come and it, go. Did you see? You know, hopefully, you're not the Artie Lang of the of the podcast for with, when it comes to his personal life. I'm no, sure you've seen. No, not me, not me, Trent. I'm an Artie, angel. Artie was in the news last week. It was not good. It was not good. He had a. Uh, he's down to one nostril. It's not looking good for Artie. I, I'm talking Artie, like you know, lovable Artie from like 2004. You know, like that oh, Artie. Yeah. Not, not the new Artie. Artie. The new Artie is uh, up to no good. Like dirty work era Artie. Right? Yeah, yeah, lo- yeah, lovable oh, yeah. Artie. You know, stern in his prime. Artie. Ah, uh, I, mean, I miss that Artie. Yeah, absolutely. That Artie was good Artie. Absolutely. But you know what, Trent? Uh, I come and go, I do. But you know what? It's kind of refreshing. I, I think it's it's good for the show because, I mean, it gives you good practice to handle it alone once in a while, but it's variety for the audience. You know, sometimes you don't got to deal with the blabbering New York idiot and you just get your, your favorite brown guy, Trent, for the whole show. A little listen, smoother. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll be honest with you, Kyle. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm looking at the numbers, right? Numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. The solo one I did, we had a big drop in numbers, Kyle. They don't want to hear just me. They want my New York asshole partner with me. They don't want just the brown guy. They don't want this caramel skin Fabio only. They well, want. I don't know prick. about that, Trent. Apparently, our buddy uh, Mir Nissim last week, he fucking burned me, man. He, in the comments. Oh, yeah, yeah. In our comments. Mir, gotcha. And we're about to do our comments right now, Trent. Uh, <laughs> in our comments, he said he's losing faith in me. Oh yeah, listen. I, I listen. I was losing faith in it too. I said, "Well, what the hell is this?" But got into Kyle. Look, it, here's the truth: is man, the numbers don't lie. The people just didn't just want me. They waited for you, and they saw that it was a Trent solo cast. They said, "The hell with it. I could skip this week." So I, I'm telling you, watch, watch the numbers jump this week. Just watch. That's right. That's right. And you Dancing Mike got my back. Dancing Mike jumped in there, defended me. I sure did. He's got but, faith uh, in me. But uh, you Kyle's know, Trent, ratings. Speaking of the numbers. Speaking of the ratings, What's just that? wanted to uh, you know address the the tribe, the loungers, while we're here right now on the show. We're yeah. gonna start boosting our numbers, Trent. We are about to start increasing our numbers because we've been talking. You know what used to make the Impact Lounge special? BQ used to do these little shorts, these quick yeah. you know five minute videos, and if you you look at the Impact Lounge, all the most viewed clips are BQ shorts, the relevant little news bites. And, uh, you know, we're not news reporters, but loungers, tribe members, how would you like for me and Trent to start churning out those videos just like BQ used to? Aside from our regular review, let's start doing those videos, Trent, because apparently those those are what bring the numbers in. People love them. I guess so. Well, listen, I'd, I'd love to do it. I got the microphone always set up. If you tell me, Trent, go knock out this news piece, or you can knock it out. You know, no frills. I think BQ didn't really throw an intro on. He just kind of went with the party people line, you know, and just kind of opened it up. And uh, I miss that. What, I, miss, I miss hearing the party people line. I miss BQ. The, the hey, party people, what's going on? That line. Can we get a sound bite of that? Yeah, I have to dig that up. We'll yeah. get that. I'll dig that up, and uh, we'll make that part of the show. <laughs> I don't have that in my inventory right now, but we'll get that. Uh, all right. you know, this guy, BQ, all he does nowadays is sit on Facebook and make Jordan memes. Crying Jordan, Jordan that, that's the thing that the kids are doing, crying Jordan. I, I follow BQ. The guy makes memes all day long. And I'm in the, I'm, 
And I'm under the impression that BQ doesn't watch Impact anymore, Trent. And I'm wrong, apparently. You're wrong. Yeah, you he saw, stumped you. I called him out on Facebook. I was like, hey, hey, BQ, you know, it's shocking to me that you have all the time in the world to make these funny memes, but you don't have any time to catch up with Impact. And he fired back at me. BQ is only one episode behind, and he's almost caught up with Impact. And the last time I talked to him a couple weeks ago, he was all the way back in, like, July. So... BQ has been banging out those episodes. He's been catching up. And Trent, I, I don't want to tease the loungers too much, but I think the return of BQ is finally upon us. I think BQ will be coming back to the Impact Lounge. I think uh, I think that's what he was teasing, man. By telling you that he um, he's like, I'm only one episode behind, and you're thinking, oh, shit. Did yeah, I just he knows I sleep? have a big mouth. He knows I'm going to come oh. tell the loungers and the tribe members. He knows I'm going to talk about he it here on the show. You poke the bear, Kyle. You poke the bear. That's what the I do. The B and BQ is for bear. And you poke the bear, man. He's coming back. That's what I He's do. Coming back, man. That is what I do. Try. I'm gonna need you to cue up a sound clip from the crow. You ever see the crow, Kyle? It might be a little bit before your time, but you're an old soul. You ever see the crow? Oh, of course, the crow. Uh, you know, it's Brandon with, Lee. Uh, the crow. Yeah, yeah. Brandon Lee. Uh, he died on the set of the movie. It's where the Sting character came from. Of course. Sure. All right, so the crow, you know, there's there's a scene in there. I need, I need you to get the sound clip for when BQ's back or when he teases coming back. There's a cute, there's a there's a sound clip in there where the crow is about to kill this guy named T Bird, and T Bird sees him and he recognizes who it is, and he starts saying, "There ain't no coming back, man. There ain't no coming back. There ain't no coming back." There ain't. He starts freaking out, man. You're gonna have to put that in there. I as got you, as, Trent. Got gotcha. to get that queued up. I need that. I need that ready to go as soon as BQ teases it. But uh, so. be before, Trent, before we read the comments here, I wanted to ask you about something. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just a, a, a piece of news that I, just, I can't stop thinking about. I can't get out of my head. It's been bothering me. Not bothering yeah. me, but kind of uh, stuck on it, Trent. Uh, our friend, Shotzi Blackheart, somebody who hasn't made too many appearances in Impact Wrestling, but when she did months ago, we loved her. We talked about her. We had the Shotzi barking soundbite. Yes, that yeah. one right there, right here. Um, she is selling pictures of her poop through PayPal to wrestling fans on the internet. You familiar with this bucks. shit? Uh, five bucks. Her shit's worth five bucks, apparently. I saw that. What the hell, man? I don't what know. What the hell are we uh, I thought that it was a joke when I first read it, but... As I uh, looked a little deeper, uh, she posted a screenshot of a transaction with a fan. Officially, she is really selling pictures of her poop. Five dollars through PayPal. That is, I I'm speechless, Trent. I don't even know what to say. This has to be a first. This is groundbreaking. I don't know, man. You got a lot going on in wrestling. You got uh, new promotions popping up everywhere. You got people showing up everywhere. You got people getting hurt. You got drama backstage now you got people talking about or people selling poop i don't know man this is the, we've come a long far way yes. Kyle, from the days of harley race and dusty roads where now people are selling their shit selling their and by, shit and uh you know what trent i gotta say uh if anybody is dumb enough to give her five dollars for a picture of her feces then you are dummy of the week so Let's get Dummy of the Week just out of the way right now, Trent. Uh, officially, anybody who is dumb enough to give Shotzi Blackheart $5 for a picture of her poop, you are Dummy of the Week. Dummy, 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 dummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, if you uh, would like to purchase a picture of Shotzi's poop in <laughs> honor of the TNI podcast, no. that's right, pledge one for us, for me and Trent. No. Uh, you can do that at shotzi.heart at yahoo.com. That is her PayPal address. Uh, oh, God. Make it out to your good pals, uh, Kyle and Trent, right here no, on the no. TNI podcast. On that note, Trent, hit oh. us with the YouTube comments. YouTube comments, everybody. Here we go. We uh, we had, and, oh, like I said, I Kyle. I play was... the jingle, Trent. You don't just dive in. I got a little, little, we have a ska band here in studio. Oh, yeah. Cue bring the out, band. Bring out the ska band. Cue the band. Let me talk to you. Comments from the loungers. Let me talk to you. Comments from the loungers. Let me talk to you. Hey, we have a name for that band, Kyle? Do we have a name for the Scott for the uh 
for the the official the official band here? Or are we just kind of winging it? The total nonstop <laughs> impact in-house band? I don't know. I mean, because you're the front man of a band, so I feel like I'm stabbing you in the back if we have an in-house band that you're not a part of, Trent. You got to bring... Why don't you invite your band members on next week, Trent, and maybe you can like kind of be like Max Weinberg on Conan O'Brien. Like You can be the, the T&I in-house band, but then also simultaneously be the host of the show. Might be able to make it work. And that would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. I can just I can just sit there making smart ass comments and just like throwing like a little beat or like a little riff every now and then. That's what I'm saying. That'd be cool. In house band, but Trent, read the YouTube comments. I want to hear uh, from the loungers and the tribe members, our family. All right. Well, family let me down. I gotta say. All right. I just because I was doing a solo cast. God damn it. You know, nobody wanted to hear old Trent. They want they want Kyle. Kyle's the goddamn star no, of the show. No, n- nobody made you do the show alone. You could have called somebody. You could have hit up Cousin Brian. You could have hit up no. J-Bone 5150. You could have hit up uh, any one of our pals. Kyle, when you tell me, Trent, I ain't going to make it this week. It's usually like 1.30 in the morning, the day before we're supposed to release. And I say, Kyle... You're leaving me holding Shotzi's bag of shit here, my friend. What am I supposed to do? Call J-Bone at 1.30 in the morning? Call Cousin Brian at 1.30 in the morning? That's a solo cast. I can start calling my dad because I know my dad's awake. I just start calling my dad. Wait, have him have him jumping on this when you're not around. He did a great job when he came on. I, I would not mind having Papa Zuberi back here on the show. Papa Zuberi loved his uh, his debut on, on the microphone, my friend. He was, uh, he was digging being broadcast I, I think i think he got the itch you know he was uh he was good he's like i haven't uh i've never experienced this you know this is kind of cool so maybe we'll maybe we'll do that but kyle no more no more you leaving me hanging people want the kyle and trent experience they want the whole package you know so the family the family didn't come out as much when they heard it was, it was a trent solo cast they didn't leave as many comments so i don't have too many to read this week kyle they, they don't want me i'm feeling a little left out guys i'm feeling a little hurt here Read Nobody what we got, Trent. Tr- Come on. I'm, it's the pity party. I need you to cue the violins right about here. Okay, all right. Here we go. Starting it off with this guy. This guy is this guy with the ideas is this guy. All right. He has a couple. I'm going to read two different ones from this guy. He says, am I the only one who doesn't care about AEW? A lot of the elite stuff is too corny for me. They're not that much better than WWE when it comes to hokey shit. Just a little more clever and a little less PG. Brandy's voice is really annoying, and her smiles look so fake. I don't understand the Young Buck characters, and their outfits look stupid, in my opinion. Adam Page just looks like a cheap knockoff of James Storm or Tejano Jr. If Joey Ryan signs with AEW, I definitely won't be watching. I enjoyed watching All In for crowd size, Cody winning the NWA title, DDP hitting the Diamond Cutter, and that's it. I think the Elite characters are heavily overrated. AEW will probably start off like TNA did when they're on Spike, and then quickly go stale before they realize carrying over their BTE comedy to a national televised wrestling product just doesn't work in the long run. This is this is a thick question here, a thick comment here, Kyle, because I'm not a fan of it either. It's too hokey for me. It's not my style. I'm not into it. So I agree. I'm with this guy that it's just it's too hokey. What? It's what are you guys talking about? See, my issue here with his comment and, and your opinion or your agreement with his comment. I is, know what you're gonna say. We haven't seen anything yet. What are you judging? What are you basing this off of? I I don't even consider All In like the official first show with the company. I don't know. I mean, what are we critiquing here? Uh, their press conferences, their T-shirts. That's about I, it. I want to agree with you guys, you know, because I'm so pro-impact. You know, I kind of want to jump to conclusions too, but I'm not going to do that. I, I'm I'm going to play it fair. I, I don't know if you know this, Trent, and the listeners know this, but I'm kind of a fair guy. You know, I, I call things right down the middle. A regular Bill Alfonso over here, calling right. it right down the middle, huh? That's right. Speaking of Bill Alfonso, uh, we got What's a retweet that? on the official Total Nonstop Impact Twitter account that you could follow at We Talk Impact. Uh, we got a retweet from Rob Van Dam, of all people, when we tweeted out uh, a GIF or a GIF. Uh, the Impact loungers can uh, yes. chew my ass on that one. I, I don't really know what officially what it is either. Uh, we tweeted out a, a gif of Rob Van Dam, Sabu, and Bill Alfonso because, Trent, we want to see Fonzie, Bill Alfonso, with oh, RVD yeah. and Sabu at United We Stand. Absolutely. I, but hey, man, it's got to be Bill Alfonso with him. Who are we going to put with him? you got to have somebody come out with him. If they, if the Lucha Brothers have Conan, 
You got to have Bill Alfonso out there. Yeah, you know, nothing, nothing against Sabu's genie. She's cool, but I want to see Fonzie. I want Alfonso. Yeah, I need Fonzie. Uh, but yeah, man. All right. So that that was that's my opinion on. I'm I'm with this guy a little bit on this. Yeah, I love this guy. He always leaves us with great comments. You know, nothing against you, buddy, but I think you guys are jumping to conclusions way too early because you're just such arrogant, hard-headed Impact fans. I am. Kyle. Honestly, I I truly am. Honestly, but he left another comment here. He says, "I've always hated Johnny's mic work in Impact, yeah. ever since he called Austin Aries a scrappy do honey badger." Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but his heel promos back in the WWE and also Lucha Underground are much better. Check out an old clip of him mocking Drew Galloway by dressing like William Wallace. It's great. Do you think they might do Callahan versus Raven in the ECW arena? That'd be freaking amazing. And finally, he says, Brian Cage, in my opinion, is like the eight, is a little bit of AJ mixed with a little bit of Samoa Joe and a little bit of Kurt Angle. That dude's got major star power. I'm going to go in order. Uh, I commented on this last week when I was solo. I'm not a fan of Johnny's mic work. I think it's it's super cheese. It's it's too cheese. I I'll check out some of this other stuff he's mentioning here, but I'm 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 kind of like eh on Johnny my, Johnny's work. Uh, Callahan and Raven in ECW arena would be incredible. I don't know if we'd get it. I think Raven's kind of taking it easy now. I'm not sure, but uh, Brian Cage, I agree. It's like a super athlete. That guy's got a little bit of everything. He looks like a million bucks. Definitely a franchise player for Impact. Kyle, take that one away. What do you think? Now, uh, hit me in order again, Trent. Uh, hit me with the order Johnny's of uh, mic- things to respond to. Johnny's mic work. Okay, so Callahan. Johnny's mic work, Trent. Uh, I'm going to hit yeah. these one by one. Uh, Johnny's mic work. Now, this is a recurring theme here on the show. We are always critiquing Johnny on that damn microphone. Now, Trent, I want to like Johnny. I think he's a tremendous wrestler. I think he's a hell of a talent. But the guy's promos stink. He can't get it right. They've had a Thanks. lot of episodes now to get it right, and they can't. I, nope. I he stinks. I, I I like Johnny. Now I don't want to you know make it seem like I'm I'm hating on the guy. He's a, he's a tremendous talent. He's a, a superstar athlete. But goddamn, as a character in Impact Wrestling, he just can't get it right, or they can't get it right. I I don't know who's to blame, but apparently, no. uh, if you look back at his body of work. He's got some stronger microphone work, you know, as a different character presented differently in different companies, apparently. This is what people say. So, I don't hate Johnny, but, man, the guy's microphone skills do stink, and uh, we need a top guy that's not Johnny very soon. Yeah, I think it's coming sooner than later. Next thing, Trent, what's the uh, next thing I need to respond to? Next thing, do you think we'll get Callahan and Raven in the ECW arena? I love that. But let's be honest, uh, Raven, I don't know if he can still work, man. I haven't seen him uh, in a wrestling match in a long, long time. I love Raven, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, Worship Raven growing up. I think he's one of the best. And I love when the legends come back. I mean, we got RVD and Sabu coming back. We had Dreamer coming back multiple times. I love that. I do like it. It Spices up the product. Love to see the young guys go against the old guys. I don't know if... Raven is going to come back and have a violent physical feud with Sammy Callahan, Trent. But I would like to see maybe Raven come back and represent some young talent as a manager. I think he would be fantastic at that. Would you agree, Trent? I agree. I think that's where he's best served at this point. Wrestling for Raven, I think it's it's good to end it, man. I mean, he's yeah, he's done. I'm sure he can. It's a, he's too old. He's too beat up. Yeah. What but, are you going to uh, get out of it? You but know? You, you can still get the microphone work between Sammy and Raven and everything that, you know, this guy is clearly fantasizing about. But Raven's not going to be wrestling. But if he's a manager, you know, it, it would be good for the product. I would love to see Raven take on a manager role. Definitely. Uh, next thing, Trent. And he asks you, he says about Brian Cage being like uh, AJ mixed with Joe, mixed with Kurt Angle. Major star power. What do you think? I agree. Uh, You know, let's give Brian Cage some time to develop and, you know, sharpen his uh, skills in impact wrestling. But I think uh, at this rate, uh, we have a super, mega, major, tremendous star on our hands, Trent. Tremendous. Agreed. And we also, all right, so. Next question, next question. Next next comment here, next comment. I love love our loungers, but we can't give people 10 minutes at a time. Next one. No, it's fine. All right, next one. Jamie Weisner says, Conan is definitely turning on LAX. 
and the Lucha Brothers are definitely winning the tag team titles. I don't read spoilers. I'm just gonna I'm just going by the vibe that I've been getting from the last couple of Impact episodes. Uh, we're gonna get into the result of this week, so we'll get into that. And then he also says, "I am glad there's finally a podcast that doesn't bore people to death about t- talking about WWE." I'm glad you guys are 100% WWE free. I also have to say thank you for being a podcast that is all about Impact Wrestling. Jamie Weisner, thank you for that comment and for that compliment. That's what we do. Trent, I'd like to point out that you referred to Jamie as a he. Jamie could be a he or she. We do not know if this is a a dude or a lady. Good point. Jamie, clear that up for us. I know you'll comment. But thank you for the love and thank you for the support. Absolutely. Richard Carlich says, congrats, Trent, on getting Rebellion right. And who needs Kyle? Oh, look at that. Kyle, I got one. I Thanks, got one person. Dick. Can I call you that, Dick? You all right with it's that, Richard. Dick? It's Richard. Thanks. Thanks. I guess yeah, yeah there, there's, there's the first guy on my shit list. I, I, I'm developing a <laughs> shit list here on the show. You know, the people that attack me and say things about me and insult me in the comments rudely. Because I, I, I work hard on this, Trent. You know, I might skip once in a while. But give me my props. You know, I, I do put some work in here on the show. What would this show be without my my my, my sound bites? My insanity. I I'll tell you, man. The, the numbers this week showed. The numbers showed. They're killing me this week. You got, yes, yes, it, Richard. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm going right. to remember that. <laughs> Akeem Fullerton says, do you guys think Congo Kong should make a return to Impact TV? If so, do you think he and Jimmy Jacobs should rekindle his feud with Johnny Impact? But this time for the world title, I am a big no on all that. I'm not a Congo Kong fan. I don't think he fits the current landscape at all for Impact. What do you think? I like Congo Kong. I got no you do? issue with him. I think he's a good talent. Uh, I like his character. You know, it brings me back to old school 80s wrestling. Reminds me of like a Kamala. I am a fan of Congo Kong. But I don't know if he fits in the product right now. They have a lot going on. I really don't see a space for him. They had him around. He, he did some good things. He was a fun little project. It, I loved seeing the full circle experience of him and Jimmy Jacobs working together. But I just don't know if he fits anywhere in the product right now. What? what, what here's, let me flip it on you. Not you, Trent. I'm talking to, wait, who wrote this to us? This was uh, Hakeem Fullerton. Hakeem, I'm asking you, Hakeem. What would you do with Congo Kong? If you would like to see Congo Kong back in Impact Wrestling... What exactly would you like to see him do? Because I can't really think of anything, but I do like Congo Kong. Nothing against the guy. But I'm more interested in seeing Jimmy Jacobs back as a part of the product than I am seeing Congo Kong back part of the product. All right, fair enough. HSG Sabu 66 says, thank you for the boobies. The photo you used for the, uh, the, the screenshot there. <laughs> No brainer, Trent. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Even though the numbers were down, the, the, the booby thumbnail couldn't save you. Anytime you put a knockout on a thumbnail or in the news or anything, there's always a boost. I mean, go on Impact Wrestling's YouTube page. We always talk about this. Look at their most viewed clips. All knockouts clips. All of them. All knockouts. Millions. Yep. Millions of views. But that keep, couldn't even uh, help you, Trent. That couldn't even help me. HSG Sabu 66 also says... Good use of the dummy app. And last week I was asking about the lift perk. You didn't specify. Let me remind everybody again that in honor of Kyle's sober month here, we have we are officially partnered with Lyft, the Lyft rideshare app, which is a uh, an Uber-like app. Lyft is pretty popular too. And we have a promo, promo code with Lyft. It is We Talk Impact. And Kyle, you get five bucks off your first ride with Lyft. Uh, so How about we, that, We huh? can officially say, you you double check now, Trent, it's five bucks off. That is the Five deal. bucks off. Yes, sir. It is five bucks off. Actually, the guy, uh, the Lyft partner of ours who was, um, who was, uh, who, who set that up for us and, and, and got us partnered up was, I, I saw him this weekend and we confirmed it. Five bucks off your first Lyft. It's on Kyle. That's in honor of Kyle. So guys, we talk impact. Go ahead and put that in. That's, uh, that's our Lyft partnership app. And I will or, uh, be giving code. everybody on the show uh, your yeah. PayPal account address. Everybody. After Pay we're done. Me. All right. Hakeem Fortin came back with some comments. He says, with the news that Diamante, Caleb Connolly, Matt Seidel, among others, have left the company, my question to you guys is, who do you think Impact should sign to replace the names they just lost and why? Ooh, I, I, I commented on this to Hakeem, and I had some good ideas here. I, I threw out Shane Strickland. 
Jake something, Kurt Stallion, and bringing back Sienna. I thought those were my my picks. You know, I like uh, their, their big stars on the Indies, and Sienna I think is is could fit right back into Impact, man. That's my uh, that's my picks. I don't know if you got a couple names off the top of your head. You know what? No, I Trent, I don't have picks to replace these people. I just want to make the point. Um, I don't know if he's right in saying that these people all left the company. Um, I think yeah. you need to look at the way Impact is operating right now. Um, they are signing some talent to deals. They are locking some people in. But for the most part, they are signing people to – well, not signing people. They're booking people to specific, you know, tapings and whatnot. A lot of people are doing, you know, per-pay appearance. So Which makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, what I love about the new Impact is they're finally embracing being a smaller company, Trent. It's a beautiful thing. It makes sense. Uh I don't know if these guys are officially done. I don't know if Matt Seidel is officially done. Uh, I don't think Diamante ever was, you know. She was kind of a background character they used a few times. But, Trent, correct me if I'm wrong. Has Diamante ever had an official match on Impact TV? She had one match against... Uh, Not an explosion man, like, match? Said Impact. No. Not explosion. It was an I believe it was an impact match. I saw her in one match only is what I can remember. But they barely ever used her. So no. I don't even think she's a good example. But no. keep in mind, folks, the way impact works nowadays. Yes, some people are locked into deals. But a lot of guys are just working on per pay appearance. That's why, like, you might see Scott Steiner show up once in a while. You might see Tommy yeah. Dreamer show up once in a while. Hopefully see Eddie Kingston again. You know, you never know what they're going to do. It's exciting and it makes sense. So, I don't know if all of those people are gone from the company, but uh, Trent, I do like your picks, and I do like the suggestion. I do like the suggestion of Sienna coming back. I'd like to see her come back. But Trent, that's enough comments. Let's get into the review. Shall all we? right, the re- review it is. Oh man, I was looking at other comments. There's so many more. Actually, there was a lot more. All, all right, right Trent, well, pick, Trent, look right now and pick one great one, and we'll just end it on that. Oh one, man, the best right. one you see quickly. Oh, man. All right, all right. I'm Mr. Give... Oh, nobody leaves me comments. Apparently, I have too many to choose from. Yeah, it's true. There, there are a lot. Comments, Trent. There are a lot. All right, I'm going to go with the Doctrine of Mayhem here because he put me over in this one. He says, your band should definitely be on impact in some form. Oh, fuck you, you <laughs> self-serving prick. Of course you're going to pick the band plug. All right, read, read your plug. Oh, good for you. Get your plug off and then read one more, and we're going to end it on that. He says, your band should definitely be on impact in some form. Intro theme for a wrestler. And, and wow, your band has a hot sauce. I love hot sauces. Might have to scrape some shipping together to get it. My favorite match has to be the Rascals versus Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards. Uh, maybe there's a mid-card title in the works. Didn't they post on Facebook or on a website a long time ago? Something about the history of the TV title or grand championship? I hope so. It's really needed when you look at this talented roster. First of all, thank you very much. Please, guys, I am working on getting some music over to Impact. Let them know. Tweet Impact Wrestling. Tweet uh, K Sully TV, Kevin Sullivan TV. He's their producer. Let him know you want to hear it. Let him know you want Hemi on this uh, on on Impact, guys. And the hot sauce you can get at HemiMusic.com. I got my own hot sauce, Kyle. It is FDA approved hot sauce. This is some good shit. It better be it's good called, hot sauce. None of that it's called, shit. No, nah, it's that called pepper Soul water. Taker. Soul Taker hot sauce, baby. This is some good shit. Uh, but yeah, all right. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump into one more. Then we're one getting more. to the review, Kyle. One more. One more. All right, one more here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. I'm going to get a good one here. Mir Nisim, I'm sorry, but I'm losing faith in Kyle. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> All right. On with the review, Kyle. Here we go. What do you think? We're going to end it on Mir Nisim telling me he's losing faith in you. Yeah, I'm losing faith in you too, Mir Nisim. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. All right, guys, we are here to review the February 8th, 2019 episode of Impact Wrestling live from Fronten, Mexico, which is right uh, in uh, Mexico City. This is part of the Mexico City tapings, and uh, we went in hot. Crowd was really hot for this one. The main event of this one was uh, was really hyped up, so this was a hot show. This we, we have built to a main event really nicely on this one. But all right, Kyle, we kicked it off pretty heavy. Willie Mack and Rich Swan taking on OVE. And uh, good match, man. It was, it was, it was a pretty. These guys have fought each other a bunch. It was a, it was a lot of, a lot of back and forth. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fair match, I would say. Rich and Willie win with Rich doing taking out a, 
taking out, I believe it was Dave with a 450. So they go over. But I noticed Kyle in this one. They were they've been really uh they've been really pushing they're really pushing the uh the OVE and Rich Swan thing more every week. It's more and more, you know. It's uh it's like it's like they're really trying to sell that 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 storyline we still don't know fully what the hell is going on you know it's like it's like there's more rooting into this rich swan and ove thing so i don't know i'm not sure where it's going after after what we got last week with the explanation i don't know, I don't know. what do you think man where, where do you think they can go from here like if rich does go to ove I mean, what do we do i mean that's it that he's just an ove or what you what know what you Trent? it's confusing to me because they're still building towards something with sammy and rich <laughs> Yeah, but now, Sammy. but now naturally on the internet, it looks like Sammy and Aries are going through something, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. We're gonna uh, break this up and do our Twitter exchange of the week. But it, it's confusing to me that I have this idea that they're setting up Aries and Sammy again, but they still have this story to tell between Sammy and Rich. Trent, I have no idea where it's going. I don't see Rich turning heel and joining OVE. I, I really just did they have me at one of those points where I have no prediction, Trent. Uh, maybe you can enlighten me. Do, do you have an idea for this? Because I, I got nothing. I just don't know what you do with it. I, I think I think maybe it was uh, maybe it maybe ends up being like a like a like a ploy to you know go rich into a match and Sammy getting the the X Division title. Maybe you know that I'm thinking maybe that's where we can go with it. Yeah. Uh, but I noticed uh, one of the one of the great lines of this match during this match was <laughs> was I think Josh said this that uh, Sammy Callahan asked the commentary if they could refer to Jake as the white trash Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and then um, no, uh, Josh then Don said, said that, but then Don said uh, he was the trailer park Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah, the trailer park Jackie Chan, and. Uh, so I, I love that, but I pop for those. Totally those hysterical. Players. That was the highlight for me, uh, Don, with the uh, Trailer Park Jackie Chan joke. Uh, I have to dig that up for next time and use that as a sound bite. But uh, you know, Trent, I want to just uh, make a comment here about the atmosphere of the crowd here in Mexico. Um, yeah, the Mexican crowd is different from the American crowd in the sense that they're not quiet, they're into the action, and they're loud, but they're not assholes in the sense that they don't try to hijack the show they don't chant this is awesome and fight forever every five minutes they don't no. try to get themselves over they're just some you know respectable cool fans they're just there for the fun man just That's the there idea for right the fun they don't try to hijack things yeah that was cool they're different like very different I, I like that in wrestling you know got the japanese crowd now the mexican crowd the american crowd Every crowd is different, you know, wherever you go. Which is why I think it's cool they go to Mexico sometimes. A lot of a lot of people I noticed were a little down on Mexico. They're like, ah, the crowd's different and doesn't have the same energy. But I, I think disagree. it's kind of cool. I like the variety, Trent. I like the variety. It's a different atmosphere. Uh, I agree. It changes up the show a little. You know, you're going to see a bunch of guys from AAA. Uh, good variety for me. But I've seen that too, Trent, even in our own comments here on the Impact Lounge. Yeah. Uh, the last time around that they went to Mexico, people were critical of the tapings, but I happened to enjoy them. I think they did a better job this this taping with the um, with the crowd placement. They laid it out a little differently. They had the crowd a little bit closer. It helped, man. I think it really helped. So, but I noticed, uh, you know, the crowd was was split on this one. Some were into OVE, some were into Rich Rich and Willie. So uh, it was fun, though. I mean, again, just furthering the furthering the story. So nothing. Too crazy, but just to kind of move things along. We go from there, Kyle, the Lucha Brothers in the back. A little promo to hype the main event, just kind of hyping it up. I noticed they've been getting really a lot better with the promos, a little more direct. Uh, I love that camera effect that they put on. I remember I asked Cousin Brian about that. He said uh, he knew exactly what it was. I don't recall. It was some some cool camera effect that they use. It really uh, really adds to their their promos. I like it. I like, I like seeing those guys uh, talk. Yeah, no, I like that too, Trent, that uh, OVE has their own promo style. L- uh, LAX has their own promo style. The Lucha Brothers have their own promo style. It's it's very cool cutting-edge production in the show. It's different, very different. It, it just gives everything a unique feel. You know, every segment, every character 
has an identity that way. That's what Absolutely. you want to have. Like when you see a Scarlet segment, you usually hear her music in the background, you know, the smoke show stuff. Uh, love it. I love the way they produce and edit the show. I love it. So we uh, we go from that little, uh, they, they go to and announce that the uncaged main event for next week is now a four-way. And it's going to be Johnny versus Moose versus Cage versus Cross for the title. Uh, originally, it was just Johnny and Cage. So they announce that to us. We get that real quick. And then uh, we jump from that. So this is a little block of, of some some segments here. But we jump from that, Kyle, to the GWN flashback of the week, which is um, Bruce Pritchard opens it up. And it's about the tag team titles and talking about stripping, uh, putting the tag belts up. And it was LAX's debut. And I like that because, and I, and I don't normally talk about the GWN flashbacks, but I like that because it was cool to, um, it got you a little more hype for later on the show because we're talking about current talent. That's LAX. not what I got from this, Trent. Uh, it was Ooh. cool seeing the LAX part at the end. Uh, you know, it, it was relevant to tonight's episode and the fact that we're going to see mm. the LAX versus the Lucha Brothers. But Trent, this flashback, Put me right in the feels, man. I, I got emotional during this flashback. You know why, Trent? Why? I miss Decay. I do. I miss Decay. And this flashback got me thinking about Decay. And I'm going to ask you, Trent, and then I'm going to turn it around to the audience. And uh, hopefully they respond in the comments. Trent, do you feel like Decay had too short of a run? Or am I just thinking that? Because, you know, it's in the rear view. It's in hindsight now. Did Decay get too short of a run? I don't think so. I don't think they did. I think they got, uh, I think any more would have been a little, would have been burnout. I think they left leaving you wanting more, and I think that's the key. But the issue here, Trent, is I thought we were going to get Decay again. I was on this podcast swearing that we were going to, and then right when we read that Crazy Steve is back around working uh, at least uh, Explosion, I don't know if he's a working impact at all i haven't seen him in any of the tapings yet but the thing is trent abyss got signed to wwe right at that point and now we know we're definitely not going to get a decay reunion and i i miss decay trent i i feel like we got screwed but then again it's like decay is kind of like a tv show that only lasted one season it's, it's like freaks and geeks you know like you, you wish it would come back but sometimes when it does come back it's not as good. It's not That's the same. Insane. So maybe That's... maybe Decay was just a moment in time, Trent. A perfect moment in time that we can uh, relive on the GWN app forever. And maybe Decay doesn't need uh, a second chapter. But I would like to see him again. But if Abyss is working in WWE, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. No. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. But, you know, like I said, they, they leave you wanting more, man. They, they left on top. Like you said, Freaks and Geeks is a good example. It uh, to this day that show's twenty years old, man, and to this day people keep talking about still, it. Still, me and my friends still uh, crack Bill Hammer and Chuck jokes all the time. One of the best shows ever, Trent. But thinking about it before we, uh, you know, end this tangent and go back to the review where we were, um, I gotta ask you, Trent, if Crazy Steve does come back into the mix, would you like to see a new faction with both Rosemary and Crazy Steve? Hey, we were talking before about Raven being a manager. I mean, there are a lot of different directions it could go. Would you like to see Crazy Steve back in the company with Rosemary, or is that not for you? That's not working. Just leave the memories of Decay alone. I just don't see it fitting into this into today's landscape of Impact, man. I just don't see it. He was there, like, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. I was at the Impact or at the uh, at the Asylum when he wrestled uh, a match, you know, which was I think um, it wasn't even a dark. It was just like a dark match. And, uh, you know, people were giving him the old welcome back and this and that. And I was like, all right, it's cool. But he looked out of place, man. He, it just didn't didn't fit. It did not fit for me. I don't see it. I, I, I couldn't really. He's good at what he does. He's good at presenting himself. He looks good. But it just doesn't fit with today's landscape of impact. It's not it's not impact today. Well, I hope that he does come back down the line and makes you eat your words, Trent. And we do see another rise of Crazy Steve in the company. But let's end that tangent, Trent. Let's get back into the review, shall we? All right, all right. All right. Well, geez, Kyle, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta downplay my, my, my feelings here. 
I don't right. know. You know, I, I think sometimes, Trent, you just love to poo-poo and naysay. I do. I, I do think that. I think it's fun to disagree with you. Yeah. Talk to those who disagree. A wise man told me that one time. I, I, Trent, I think you're just developing this personality as the devil's advocate here on the show. That's what I think. It's not a bad thing. Not a bad. Good movie, too, by the way. Good movie. I liked it. All right. We, uh, we go from that to Kira and Jordan warming up backstage doing squats. And, you know, you know that, that's now we know the secret to Kira's, uh, uh, let's just say her assets, Kyle. Yes, um, yes, her assets. Her assets. And then Jordan's teaching her some some better form even. Jordan's showing her how to really do the thick mama pump squats, you know. And so she's showing her. We go to commercial. We come back off of that. They tell us that the NFL alumni and Impact to form a partnership to help kids in Las Vegas. And Killer Cross was there playing golf with everybody. It was Quite the sight, but uh, Impact and the NFL have formed a partnership, that, which is pretty cool. And then, go to the match, Alley versus Kira Hogan. Dark Alley, I should say. Uh, accompanied by Sue Young, and Kira's coming out with Jordan Grace. I noticed right away, Kyle, new Alley music. Dark music and a dark entrance, which I've been talking about. I mentioned this. I think they're listening to us, Kyle. I really think they're listening to us. Because I talked about this weeks ago. I said... I said, if you're going to have her be dark, Allie, she's got to come out to the dark entrance. Turn the lights off. And sure enough, Kyle, what do we get in Mexico? The goddamn lights are off. It's dark. And it looked so much cooler. It added so much to that character for her to come out in, into, in, a, in a dark arena. Man, I thought that was cool as shit. But um, I thought that was good. That was good. And then Akira, super aggressive. She, she was really there to fight. I liked it. Allie gets... Uh, Jordan takes out Sue Young on, on on the outside. Allie gets distracted, and Kira takes the win. So big win for Kira on this one. Big win for Kira. I now I'm just lost, Kyle. Where do we go from here? I mean, Allie's freaking out. They tease a little bit of Jordan. I mean, uh, Rosemary in there. I don't know, man. Where where do, where do you where do you see it going? Where, what do you think? What where, how much longer are we going to wait for this showdown? Good question, Trent. Uh, I think uh, once we get to the Las Vegas tapings, we are going to see Rosemary really, really come back. And uh, the next chapter will be written, Trent. But uh, no end in sight for this story, without a doubt. I, th- this has a lot of juice left in it, Trent. I think so. I this think can go we on. Are... This can keep going on. You have so many chapters, so many different directions. We gotta add some elements to it, though. If we're gonna have chapters, we gotta add, we gotta add more elements to this. You know what I mean? We gotta keep, we gotta further it with something. It can't just be like you know, Kira fighting Allie and Allie fighting Kira and Allie fighting Jordan. It's gotta be something's ha- something has to happen here. You know, like Sue's gotta take out somebody or somebody's gonna get hurt or there's gotta be a bloodbath. I don't know. Something's gonna happen to keep this uh, keep this ball moving here. So we'll see. Well, Kira is not part of the story for no reason, so keep your eyes on Kira Hogan, Trent. I'm calling it yeah. now. Fair enough. We go to the back, and some guy named Rolando Jimenez, he, who calls himself, a, he's like, he says, I'm Rolando Jimenez, investigative reporter. I don't know where the hell this guy came from. But he stops Johnny Impact in the hotel lobby, and then he says, uh, he says, uh, you know, he tells me, he's like, you know, what do you think about this, uh, this change in the main event next week? Johnny's like, what? What are you talking about? You know, you're super cheesy, Johnny. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? You know, uh, what, what main event? What's going on? And uh, he basically tells him that it's now a four way, as announced by Impact. He's going to be taking on Cage, Cross, and Moose in the main event. Johnny's thinking, oh, what the hell? I'm getting screwed. This sucks. And uh, while he's he's complaining about it, uh, Cage walks up casually, like like he's just strolling through the hotel lobby, and he says, uh. Oh, you heard? Sucks getting screwed, huh? And he just strolls off. Casual. Casual Cage. Should be his new nickname. Casual Cage. I don't know. What'd you, what, do you, what do you think about Rolando Jimenez, investigative reporter? Where did this guy come from? It should hey, be you. Rolando. I'm, I'm a fan of Rolando, Trent. But uh, another example of Johnny Cheese Pact. This guy is Johnny. cheesing it up. Stinking up uh, the microphone. Super cheese. Listen, I work for Kraft. I know cheese. I know craft cheese. I work for craft. I know craft cheese, and God damn it, that's cheese. That I don't is, think craft is... sells cheese, Trent. I, I think they sell powder. You know, powder that <laughs> you mix 
Cheese hey, boss. Powder. Hey, boss. He said it, okay? Not me. I just want to go on the record saying I'm not the one hey, saying I, that. I love Kraft Mac and Cheese. Kraft Mac and Cheese is delicious. Delicious treat. But Trent, Johnny is a cheese ball. Cheese ball. Cheese ball promos. But Super I do like cheese. Rolando. Yeah, I thought that was kind of neat. It was kind of cool to change it up and have an investigative <laughs> reporter running around backstage. You know, now that Rolando has been on Impact Wrestling once, He's out there, you know. He's got impact on his resume. You never know when he's going to become all elite, Rolando. You know, <laughs> very possible that Rolando gets signed to all elite wrestling any day now. So keep but your eyes on him. One appearance. Hey, we've That's signed right. Rolando Jimenez. That's right. Investigative reporter. That's right. <laughs> Continue, my friend. The way this shit's going, man. Who knows? Uh, big announcement here, Kyle. After that, after Rolando, we got a huge announcement for WrestleMania weekend. The partner show that Impact is doing with WrestlePro at Rahway, at the Rahway Rec Center in New Jersey, the main event was announced. It is the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon and Phoenix, taking on. I can I can't believe I'm, I'm going to see this match. I live to see this match. Rob Van Dam and Sabu. F- fucking nuts. I, it's an extreme dream match. I, I don't even know what to say. I got no words for this. Kyle, you're an East Coast guy. This is up your alley. What the hell did I just get announced here? What? What? what I mean, I'm I'm speechless. I'm speechless at this. I'm a big mark for these two for these oh, guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Trent. Uh, you know what? Uh, big RVD and Sabu fan. Uh, it's funny because the venue that this is taking place at, and uh, this is the Rahway Rec Center, and the Rahway Rec Center is known for its super cards. They are known to put on these these legend shows all the time. So it, it, it's not a surprise to me that when Impact comes to this arena, they're going to put on a match like this, an extreme dream match, Trent. The Lucha Brothers, RVD and Sabu, I'm totally psyched to see it. But I'm going to be honest with you, Trent. Uh, you're going to have to come pick me up on the way if you're going to be hitting the East Coast, Trent. I'm riding with you. I'm not traveling alone. I'm riding with the boys. Me, you, far, cousin Brian, old gang. How far is Rahway from uh, from New York City? I, uh, you know what? I was a little concerned. They were saying uh, you're gonna make it quick, but uh, I've never attempted the drive, Trent. I always take from Penn Station. There's an Amtrak right to Rahway, and uh, there's a, the Rahway Train Center is directly across the street from the Rahway Rec Center. Well, that's uh, where we're going. It's going to be a tough drive, but I think we can make it, Trent. Pedal to the metal, I think we can make it. Uh, we're taking that train from Penn Station, man. That's what we're doing. Get that train, get that get that, that, that Metro card going, brother. We're going. We're taking that train. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And uh, when you're in Penn Station, uh, right next to the uh, Amtrak there, there's a Krispy Kreme, Trent. So get ready to stuff your donut hole with some Krispy What's Kreme glazed. You know, it's funny you mentioned. I was just talking about Krispy Kreme. I was in Austin, Texas this weekend for AAW, and they had a Voodoo Donuts. You ever heard of Voodoo Donuts? They're out of uh, they're out of Portland, I think originally. I just drove past the Voodoo Donuts the other day. There's one next to Chipotle in Jersey Mike's uh, somewhere near where okay. I live. I saw Voodoo Donuts. I was checking it out. Voodoo Donuts, huh? I was uh, I was not impressed. I, I this Ooh. thing's been hyped for for years to me, years, man. And I was like, that was it. Uh, it's cheap for what they are, but I'm like, that was it? Voodoo Donuts? Uh, I don't know. I was I was let down. I had it in Austin. I was like, man, I don't know about this. That, that was a big letdown. I'm a big, uh, I think uh, Stan's Donuts in Chicago, way cooler. Way cooler. That's just me, though. Uh, Krispy Kreme has my vote, oh, Trent. We're gonna I love Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kremes when we make that trip. I'm riding with you, Trent. We're going. We're hitting Rahway. Oh, I, I was just saying about how I miss Krispy Kreme when I was at Voodoo Donuts. That's what I was getting at here. I, I love Krispy Kreme. We're doing it. All right, but yeah, raw way it is, guys. Okay, we jump from that. We go from that to our, our to a backstage segment. Allie and Sue Young. Allie's freaking out. She's like, she's here. She's here. I know she's here. What's going to happen? She's here. She's here. And uh, kind of you, you see the, the fuzzy screen. And uh, the TV, once again, has a message from Rosemary. To Allie on there. Once again, she is infiltrating Allie's space and freaking everybody out. So Rosemary making her presence felt. But the spirit of Rosemary's there. She knows she knows she's coming. She knows she's getting there. Mind games, we, Trent. The mind, mind games. Those mind games, they'll get you every time. Oh, yeah. It reminds me of when Hulk Hogan saw Ultimate Warrior in the mirror. Back <laughs> yes. That's what it reminds me of. 
Mind Games. Good song by John Lennon, too. You a, jo- you a Beatles fan, Kyle? I don't think I ever asked you that. You I'm like the Beatles? Fan. I enjoy some Beatles. Uh, me, personally, I'm more into, like, uh, druggy Beatles. You know, I like druggy Beatles, the, the, the latter part of their career. But yeah, oh, I yeah. do love some Beatles. Got to love the Beatles. Got to love the Beatles. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so we go from that. Rohit Raju with Raj and Gama Singh. Chacha Gama Singh, I should say. Taking on Trey with the Rascals. And, uh, dude, this was this was a good match. I, I love that Rohit got got some solo time to shine. Where he, I mean, this, They gave him a lot of time in this one, too. I was like, it's pretty shocked. I did not see them giving these guys a lot of time. But uh, it was cool, man. Rohit really got to shine. By the way, side note, Kyle, we had we still we're still working on getting Rohit on the show, so we want you guys to leave questions for us to ask Rohit Raju. He's gonna be on the show pretty soon. We're just locking a time down, but remember, remember to leave comments yes, with questions. Yes, Trent. And you know what, Trent? I got I gotta mention it. Uh, I love the loungers. I love the Impact Tribe. They never let me down, except for when they are insulting me, like Richard Cartilage and. Uh, Mir Nisim, who are both on my shit list now, by the way. Uh, they Not let mine. us down in the sense that when we announced the Rohit thing here on the show, barely anybody sent us any questions. So please, we're, we're desperate. We're begging. Give us some questions to ask Rohit when he comes on the interview because me and Trent don't want to do this interview alone. We need you guys to help us. The Impact Tribe, the loungers, you guys are a part of this. We are all one big show here. This is the People Show. So please... Right now, in the comments, pause the show if you have to. Scroll on down. Leave us a question for Mr. Rohit Raju of the Daisy Hit Squad because we want to hear from you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, listen, if you guys don't leave them, we're going to ask them anyway, but we'll have our own questions. But damn it, you know, make it easier on us. Get interactive. We'll, we'll announce your name on the, on the, uh, yes, yes. On the well, interview. You know, great, great job by Rohit, but uh, he did not come out on top. He came up short, Trent. Uh, Trey took him out with uh, what? What would you call that? What is Trey's finisher there? I didn't get a name for it. It's like a double knee, floating double knee off the top rope. I don't know what you Here call we it. Go, I... Trent. What do we have bitch about every single fucking review we no. do? Brand yep, the moves. No. Brand, Brand the moves. moves. Give us a na- have it. Josh Matthews should be backstage with Trey and saying, "What the hell do you call that move?" I'm going to announce it, and then you sell the shit out of it throughout the show. Brand the moves again. That's one thing I will always say. That that uh, Vince McMahon it always did is he branded the shit out of every little thing that his characters did. Their finisher move, their little like signature move in between, the way they walk, the something they said. I mean, dude, you gotta brand it. That's the shit people remember. You know, that's the stuff that people hang on to. So you gotta brand the moves. Yeah, impact, there should be no you have reason. to stop leaving us to guess what these finishing moves are called. Please. There should, be, there should be no reason why we don't why we're sitting here right now going, what's the name of that finishing move? You know what I mean? We, there's no reason. No reason at all that we should be guessing what the hell it was called. But um good good match. I think they both looked really good. This was like to me, Kyle, this was X Division. This was like, all right, this is that 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 signature X Division match that you see in the in every episode. Yes. You're used to seeing it. I love I I I'm a big fan of opening with the X Division type matches because it starts to show off hot. But because uh, I felt an old like school WCW guy, and oh, you just yeah. love opening up with a, a cruiserweight classic. Yeah, but it's the thing though. Yep. By putting it in the middle, I don't know. I feel I feel like it, it's a it's better suited at the beginning of the Fire show. Up that crowd, fire them up, fire them right up from Jump Street. But I gotta uh, say, Trent, uh, very impressed with Trey Miguel in this match, and I do think that Trey has a future in the X Division. I do. I think that guy is a guaranteed X Division champion somewhere in the future. He's still just starting out here at Impact, but down the line in the future, I see Trey Miguel with an X Division strap around that shoulder, around that waist. I do. No doubt about it. That's a future X Division champion. I'm I'm predicting that myself. I think he's he's everything your X Division champion should be. I think he's got uh, he's got the size, the style, the look. I mean, he's he's good, man. He's got it. I'd love to see him eventually take that 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 belt. It'll be a little bit, you know, there's a lot of a lot of guys in the way, so we'll see. You know, right right now, Rich is tied up with Sammy Callahan, so we'll see where it goes. But a great match between uh, Trey Miguel and uh, Rohit Raju. Uh, 
Gama made me laugh a lot during this match. I thought Gama is just fantastic. I like the little details of uh, him being afraid of the rascals. Oh, yeah, that was good. Gama's I noticed the, the crowd crowd in Mexico really responds well to, like, uh, kind of mockery and goofy stuff. Like, when, uh, you know, like he, like when, when Rohit was mocking Trey's, like, the, the rascal, you know, hand sign, they respond. They pop for that kind of stuff. They are They, they pop for when Trey did it back or, like, he was – being silly or they were messing with, with Gama. Like Mexican crowd loves that simple, you know, kind of goofy baby face stuff. I thought that was cute. They, they, it's like innocent in a way, you know, they, they're not too complicated. They like just that simple, fun match. So that was cool, man. To me, that was, uh, that's what that shit's all about, man. Just having a good time. No but, doubt. uh, no doubt. Let's move it forward. What we got here next, we, Trent? Here we go. We go, uh, we're hyping up. We got a little hype with the uh, AAA versus Impact World Cup. That's going to be, I believe, next week. Uh, Vikingo, Puma King, Psycho Clown, and Aerostar. So a little hype video showing us who they are. Aerostar, we know. We're pretty familiar with him. The other guys we've seen on the Mexico tapings. Is, the one I'm looking forward to here is uh, definitely definitely Vikingo. That, that kid is nuts, 22 years old. Uh, kind of secretive, no social media, really. I'd like to see what this kid can do, man. I want to see more of Vikingo for sure. Somebody you would like to see Impact sign potentially, Trent? Is that what you're saying? I wouldn't mind, but the thing is, how much can he bring? You know, I think there's a language barrier. I think he does not speak English. I thought that's what I heard. I'm not sure. But uh, the dude is good, man. He is one talented son of a bitch. So I wouldn't mind. You know, bring him in for stuff like this. I mean, he's definitely been on both Mexico tapings, which is cool. Uh but we go from that, and Scarlett gives us a little 30-second teaser, letting us know that she is going to be making her wrestling debut in Vegas. So wait for that to happen, because, uh, Kyle, where else is a smoke show going to debut? She's not doing boing. it in Mexico. That's boing, right. boing. Ba, 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 ba. Sin City, right. indeed. That's right. And then we got one of the – this was not a main event. This is not the main event, but, my, my God, this match, I didn't expect shit going into this. But shit, man, this was uh, this was unreal. Sammy Callahan and Puma King, who I'm not familiar with really, but holy shit, he is super over. The crowd fucking loves Puma King. I found out that he's a second generation wrestler. He's the son of Felino, which was pointed out to us on commentary. And uh, Sammy, you know, Sammy, Sammy, as we know, super aggressive match. The the crowd I noticed really loved. They kind of loved how scummy Sammy was with the spit spots and all that shit. They liked it, and man, it was a nice, long, long match. I mean, these guys beat the shit out of each other for a stretch, and then Sammy takes the win with a quick snap pile driver. Uh, I loved it, man. I did not expect anything going into this, Kyle. What about you, man? What are your thoughts on this one? I mean, Trent, anytime we see Sammy Callahan, we're in for a treat. Let's face it. Sammy Callahan has never, ever disappointed you as a fan, Trent, ever. Never. But give Puma King his uh, fair due, Puma King. I wasn't familiar with Puma King uh, before this matchup, Trent, but, uh, hey, you know, he didn't uh, he didn't do anything wrong. He hell of a performer. But this was Sammy Callahan's match, Trent, let's be honest. This was about Sammy Callahan and that beautiful, devastating pile driver that it's never gets old. Never, never fails to make me... Uh, cringe and jump out of my seat beautiful thing yeah. trent but uh you make a good point about the mexican crowd reacting a certain way um i think trent it's fair to say that if you think about like triple a and uh what their shows are about uh as much as you can um translate and decipher because <laughs> their shows are not in english but uh i feel like classic lucha libre the fans love very animated over the top characters and I mean, come on, Sammy Callahan is perfect. Uh, Sammy Callahan had a run as a heel or a Rudo, so to speak, in uh, AAA. Probably drew a bunch of money. People love characters like that. Yeah, they do. They respond to that kind of stuff. You know, that's that's what gets over out there. And uh, I like it. It's just classic stuff. Good guy, bad guy. I mean, the, uh, that's what people want to see at the end of the day, man. Yeah, so but Sammy Callahan is, to me, like, just the master of being that animated over the top guy from his look to every little tiny detail out in the ring, every facial expression. Uh, Sammy Callahan has mastered the art of being a character out in the ring for sure. 
One of the notes I had here, Kyle, I said Sam Callahan is the Terry Funk of our generation. And I think it's uh I think he's a, he's a journeyman, you know, he's everywhere. He's he's done a taste of all the majors. He's he's had the guy is so committed to that character. You, like I remember Joey Styles one time talking about Terry Funk and he says he he's just like it has to be a shoot. There's no way that's a work. Like Terry Funk as a whole. Like he's like there's no way it's it's a work. It has to be a shoot who he is. Like that that is that is Terry Funk. It can't be I'm like with Sammy it's like the, it, it's not a work. That's Sammy Callahan. I see the guy backstage. I know him. I know him personally. He's uh he's an intense guy. He's he's very, very all he does is think this business. I've heard you mention that, Trent, before that like uh when you guys are running uh the AAW shows, um you guys have uh when you see Sammy before and after the show, Trent, you said it's kinda of best to avoid him because He's just on level 100 before and after the show. He's just, dude, yeah, he's, before the show, I don't even fuck with him. I, I can't even, I say hello to him when he comes in, give him a little uh, high five and a hug, the bro hug, and then I don't even, I don't even bother. Uh, yeah, unless he's got a pre-tape that we got to produce, I don't even, I don't even fuck with him. But when he's, he turns it on, man, he's on, do not get in his way. Afterwards, he's cool. He's chill. After the show, he's super relaxed. And uh, but the guy's in his zone, man. Talk about a true artist for the craft. Uh, Sammy Callahan is is incredible at what he does. I, I I'm I'm like honestly, I it's so crazy because like he's this regular dude, you know, like he's he's, he's like my height. Uh, he's not this super muscular dude, uh, but what a what an incredible personality, dude. He he's like I'm I sit there and I watch him work, and I'm like I'm in the presence of like what is one of the greatest professional wrestlers that's going to go down in history. I mean, he's I'm enamored by how intense this guy works, man. So, and speaking of incredible. Sammy Callahan, Trent, uh, I want to bring this up to you while we're here on the show. Uh, did you catch the Twitter exchange between Sammy Callahan and Austin Aries past couple days? Have you seen any of that, Trent? I have. I, I have seen that, and holy shit. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you tell people about it? Well, where do I start, Trent? There are so many tweets to read, but uh, I'll go through a couple here. Um, so Sammy Callahan was uh, mentioned on Impact's uh, social media in their Best of uh, 2018 awards, I guess. And uh, yeah. Sammy tweeted acknowledging that, and he wrote, uh, 2018 was the most successful year of the draw's career. Wait until you see what I have planned for 2019, dot, dot, dot. Austin Aries responds, and behind the curtain, you only had to break a guy's face due to amateur execution, hashtag moment of the year, ignore and steal 10 plus minutes of my pay-per-view main event match time for yourself, hashtag match of the year, get nobody over but you at your colleague's expense, hashtag wrestler of the year, so about BFG, dot, dot, dot. Sammy writes back, kiss my ass, Dan, cry me a river. Take your ball and run home when you don't get your way, just like you've done in every company you've ever worked for. Austin Aries responds, Holy shit, did you really do the real name tweet like a fucking mark? And if your ball is ever worth what my ball is worth, get back to me about how, where, and for who you play with it. Until then, careful what stones you throw, Solomon Crow. Then Sammy <laughs> writes back, Trent, I'm pretty sure my ball has been shooting game winners for years, Dan. It's not like I'm contracted to three major United States wrestling promotions or anything. Oh, wait, I am dot, 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 at Impact Wrestling, at MLW, at Lucha El Rey. Where are you and your ball working right now? Right, right now? Nowhere. So then Austin Aries responds, congrats, working places I've turned down deals from recently. Oh, at Dave Meltzer, didn't report that question mark. Not doing a back and forth here. I really do have better things to do. So keep being a good grunt boy for them promoters. And I'll look for you on TV. What major channel again? Oh, my God. And they kept going back and forth. And uh, Austin Aries put up an old picture of what looked like, I'm going to guess by the ring apron, 2007 Ring of Honor. You know, they got that red border around the ring. Uh, yeah. Austin has a classic, like, MySpace haircut in the picture. Very 2007-looking picture. And uh, it's a picture of him and Sammy back in the day. And... Uh, Austin Aries is just a master troll on the internet and uh, 
hashtag free the nipple made me laugh. It's just such a funny picture. Uh, you have to see it for yourself. Get on at Austin Aries on Twitter, Impact Lounge. Uh, I could keep reading these tweets because they keep going on, but that would take up way too much time here on the show, and I want to direct the internet traffic here, so please go check out Austin Aries' Twitter and also Sammy Callahan's Twitter and read these tweets back and forth. But Trent, before we continue with the review, I want to ask you, is this legit? Or are we working towards a feud and Austin Aries coming back? Am I reading working? Am I reading entertainment? Or is this a real argument between two men? I think it's real, man. I can't see anything in between there. I'm convinced it's real. And that's not me bullshitting. I really do think it's this is a shoot. They if went, they, this was an Impact Wrestling thing, would he insult the TV company they're on by making the major channel joke? Like, I don't know, Trent. I don't know. I think we're getting worked. Are we getting worked? Is is Austin Aries coming back to Vegas taping strength? I mean, he lives in Vegas, doesn't he? So <laughs> he lives out there, from what I understand. So it's uh, it's entirely possible. I'm just like my whole thing is that. Okay, one of the things that I was listening to Russo show, and he said something like the one way you can really, um, really garner authentic interest in wrestling again is by blurring the reality line or put or inject reality into it. And, um, I mean, those tweets are reality. He's calling up Dan. They're insulting the TV network. He's saying, talking about going home. You stole minutes off my main event that that's real shit. That's all fact. And so I'm like, Holy shit. I mean, they're not holding back on anything. So it's one of those things where like, it's a reality based story. Uh, and we're so accustomed as fans, man. We're, we're thinking everything is a goddamn work. I personally think it's a shoot. I, if it ends up being a work, they really got us pretty good. Uh, but I'm going with shoot for now. I don't know what, what I want to put out to the lounge, man. What do you guys think? Loungers, our impact tribe. What do you guys think this is? Uh, work or shoot? Let's hear it. No, you're, you're getting work, Trent. No way. So, Trent, are you telling me that you don't think Austin Aries is coming back to impact wrestling? Anytime soon? I don't think so. Okay, I think, so uh, Trent, here's what's going to happen. If Austin Aries shows up at the Vegas tapings, you have to shave your head. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not going to shave my and head. And if, if he doesn't, in honor of Austin Aries, Trent, I'll give up meat for the rest of the year. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot give up meat for the rest of the year. You just sent me a picture of you eating chicken wings today. Let's let's put this bet on the <laughs> table, Trent. Austin Aries comes back at Vegas tapings. You got to shave your head. If if he doesn't, I give up meat for the rest of the year. Shave my head? Can I just get a haircut? You have to get a haircut, but the the tribe is going to the loungers. They're going to pick your haircut. They're going to oh, vote on the come haircut. On. All right. We have well, time you know, to I'm, plan this. We have time to plan this. I'm pretty confident that this is a work. About this is a shoot. So, so all right. Let's go with it. All right. Let's That's shake on, on it, Trent. I got my hand up right now. We're shaking on it. Virtual Skype shake. Let's That's do right. it. That's right. <laughs> let's continue with the review now, Trent. Let's get back into it. Bobbing and weaving through the subjects. Yeah, sure. We sure are. This is this is a thick episode, man. You were gone last week. This is a good way to make up for that here. The boys are back in town. Boys are back in town, baby. All right. <laughs> We jump over, Kyle, to Eddie and Eli backstage. Eli says, you see that, Eddie? I didn't need a hardcore to win that match. Get the job done. Whereas we know, we all know he did. He used uh, Kenny the uh, the kendo stick. And uh, Eddie's like, oh, well, I guess so. And he says, all right, next week we got the World Cup thing. He's like, bring your old gear. I want to see the old Eddie back. Bring the tights. Drop all this shit. I want to see the old Eddie back. The wrestler you were, you know, the world champion, the X Division champion. You know, the tag team champion. I want that Eddie back. We'll see what Eddie shows up in next week. Let's see what happens. All right. We go from that. Well, hold on, Trent, real quick. Oh. What do you think about the odd couple pairing of Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards? I wasn't here last week to talk about it with you. What do you think about this pairing? Strange bedfellows, as Josh called them. Uh, I think it's a waste of Eli Drake, to be honest. I'd like to see Eli in a solo program. I just don't know what putting him with Eddie does for him. It's good for Eddie. It gives Eddie a kind of a mouthpiece to bounce off of. 
But what does it do for Eli Drake? Eli Drake's a top guy, man. I I don't know what the hell this is. No, Trent, he's not. I, I think he is, too. I love Eli Drake. Eli Drake is probably my favorite wrestler in the promotion all around. But we're going to have to accept it, Trent. Management does not see him that way. They keep putting him in random spots, putting him wherever they can in the show. Management refuses to give him a push, and you know it. And everybody else knows it, but nobody knows why. Somebody doesn't like him backstage, Trent. I know I sound paranoid, but I've thought this for a while. If you watch the intro of the show, sometimes, some weeks, he's barely even in it. People have a problem with Eli Drake backstage. That, that's my observation. That's my speculation. I have no facts to base this off of, but I just feel like they refuse to push the guy, but all the fans want to see him. I don't get it, man. I don't get it either, Trent. I don't understand. I'm, I'm so confused by all that. Maybe it's leading to something. That's all I can do is hope for that, man. But you know that's wishful thinking. You know that's very, wishful thinking. Very, very wishful thinking at this point because I thought – by now, you'd work him into something. I know the main event's stacked, but this is why you need a fucking mid-card title, man. Why not have a TV title or a U.S. title or something? Eli Drake could carry that so nicely. Yes. We're wasting that mid-card so goddamn bad right now. I want Impact to be on the right side of history when it you know, comes to Eli Drake's career and his body of work, Trent. I don't want him to leave the company, go on somewhere else, and be a super successful main event world champion in a different company because I don't want to be left here saying, wow, Trent, Impact didn't know what they had with Eli Drake. Impact really could have did this with Eli Drake. Impact could have did that with Eli Drake. Why did they refuse to just give the guy the title? I know, Trent, there's a lot of a lot of sharks in the pond. There's uh, a lot of main event caliber talent in Impact right now. But Eli, Eli has been groomed for it, and then they just shot him back down the card. I don't know. I'll never get it. The loungers will never get it. Hopefully one day we finally have some answers. I hope so, man, because right now I, I feel like we are we're just, we're just floating here with Eli. I don't get it. But uh, we go there, Kyle. We go from that to Moose and Cross backstage with uh, Melissa Santos. And Moose is... Uh, Moose is that top, that top performance. He's like, he goes, ah, it's going to be, it's all about us. We're going to do it together. We're a team. He goes, look, if I win, we'll keep the, we'll keep the belt in my trophy case. If you win cross, we'll keep the belt in my trophy case. Cross kind of looks at him and he kind of like gives him a funny look. And Moose says, he quotes Bill Belichick and he says, there is no I in team. And cross just kind of looks at him and says, I prefer the one about the frog and the scorpion. And then he walks off. Pretty creepy. Kyle, are you familiar with the frog and the scorpion? No, Trent. Fill me in. I'm going to read it to you here, okay? This is a story about the frog and the scorpion. I'm going to read this to you. A scorpion asks a frog to carry it across the river. The frog hesitates, afraid of being stung. But the scorpion argues that if he did so, they would both drown. Considering this, the frog agrees. But midway across the river, the scorpion does indeed sting the frog dooming them both. When the frog asks the scorpion, why? Why did you do this to me? The scorpion replies that it was in his nature to do so. Because he's he's still a scorpion. Now, it's kind of subtle, right? We're going with Cross. Basically, Cross is giving you a message there that you might be my friend, but I'm still Killer Cross. I'm still the scorpion. Ooh. You're my frog. You're helping me across the river. But... I'm still a sadistic bastard, and I'm going to stab you when I, when I don't need you anymore. Been saying it, Trent. Trent, I said this on the Bound for Glory review we did months ago. A guy like Killer Cross, he doesn't need any friends. What the hell does he need from Moose? It's, it's not going to last long, Trent. I, I think between the lines, Killer Cross was letting Moose know he's going to kill him someday, but Moose is just too dumb to see it. Moose is happy-go-lucky. He was uh, coming off a Patriots victory. You know, Moose is a former New England Patriot coming off that Super Bowl, feeling good for his uh, his buddies there, but uh, too blind to see. But he's you know, too, too uh, invested in his outfits and his Gucci scarves. It's to too high pay more clouds. attention on Killer Cross. Head in the clouds, too blind to see. He's not seeing, he's not noticing what is right in front of him, and that is the Scorpion. 
Killer Cross. But uh, all right, man, main event. This is it. This is what we've, we've been waiting for here, Kyle. LAX defending the Impact World Tag Team Championships against the Lucha Brothers. It was a uh, a very built match. Now I want to add something here. At the same time, this was airing for LA with LAX and the Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers were challenging AR Fox and Myron Reed for the AAW Tag Team Championships at the same damn time that this was happening. We didn't plan it that way in Texas. And I was in, I was in Texas watching this. I was at that one. And uh, it was nuts. So we, we had the Lucha Brothers and tag team matches simultaneously. But um, I'm going to get to the ending uh, once we wrap up the finish here. No, 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 Trent. Whoa, Trent, whoa, whoa, I, I, whoa, whoa. Wait, are, are you saying you're going to get to the ending of – AAW or the Impact episode? I'm going to tie them both. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up to it. Let me break down some okay, match here. Okay, because I, I have an accusation. Of the, so, yeah, continue, Trent. Just continue. Yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll we'll I'll get you, there. I'll let you get there. Yes. Uh, a very traditional cultural introduction with drums and the and the uh, the dragon dancers. Seemed very Japanese to me or Chinese to me. So I don't know where the Mexican part came in. I Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe that was something very traditional Mexican as well. Yes, uh, very Trent, cool. I, uh, I am... Uh, uh, I know a lot about Mexican culture, clearly, Trent. Clearly, clearly, yeah. We're, this is what talking, we need whoopsie for. We're talking the whoopsie fillers in on this one. Tell us what's Let going us on. Know. Lucha Brothers start off hot, immediately go right at it. Crowd is on its fucking toes for this one, losing their minds. Lucha Brothers are going at it super hard. Just try to take LAX out immediately. Uh, great chemistry. These guys have fought each other for for months now. Chemistry is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I noticed my big one of my big takeaways here. Josh and Don's commentary was their, I think, their best commentary to date. It was they were so into this match that it was like it had me hooked even more on what was going on. They those two were so it was like old school storytelling, excitement. I was like, man, I want more of this Josh Matthews. I want more of this Don Callis. Because it was perfect. You know, Trent, I, I expect greatness from Don Callis always. I feel like he's just a natural. But give Josh some credit. Uh, Josh has very much improved. Josh has really come into his own, hasn't he? He's finally mastered his style. We've been critical of Josh Matthews over time. A lot of people have. Let's be honest. Josh definitely isn't uh, an over-loved personality in the wrestling business. You know, he... He has no affiliations to, like, the Bullet Club or anything. He, you know, his roots are in WWE. So he's got the bias against him naturally. Stupid fans hate him, and they don't know why he they hate him. But uh, I got to say, Trent, Josh Matthews has improved so much since he first came into Impact. I, I truly do think that uh, Josh and Don are a great team, and they both bring out, you know, great things in each other. I agree with you, man. They're a great duo, uh, but this was their best work. I loved how good they were on this one. So um, great, great in that regard. There was a Fear Factor package power driver for the win. New tag team champions, the Lucha Brothers in Mexico. Huge pop. Crowd goes insane. Simultaneously in Austin, Texas, they won the AW Tag Team Championships. The Lucha Brothers were on fire on Friday, uh, February 8th, man. What a what a nutty, what a nutty moment! Now, your theory, Kyle, you were gonna get to. Now, Trent, news broke the wrestling circuit that during the match at AAW, not the one on Impact, not the one we watched on Impact, but the one you were live in the building for, working at AAW where you work. Phoenix got injured apparently during the match. He was stretchered out. It was a Big bad thing. Now, Trent, news has broken recently that Pentagon and Phoenix have agreed to work for AEW. And Trent, I think as the Impact supporter, Impact fan, Impact obsessed. Now, Trent, you live, breathe, and die Impact. I think you had something to do with it. I think you threw something in the ring that he slipped on. You did something, Trent. I think you set up Phoenix because you don't want to see him ever leave Impact and officially go to AEW full-time. I, I think so, Trent. 
I'm accusing you of that. That's a uh, very deep accusation you're throwing at me, Kyle. Deep. That's tough. That's no, a tough no, one as well. In all seriousness, Trent, uh, tell me about this injury. What happened? Give me your perspective. What the fuck happened? A uh, little scary. Um, the uh, Myron, uh, what was the deal? So Phoenix was giving Myron Reed, great up and coming superstar. Man, this Myron Reed's awesome. Definitely, guys, get into Myron Reed now. Uh, he was giving him a cutter off the top rope, and Phoenix had his neck, his chin tucked. And, you know, he had Myron on his shoulder, the weight of that, the impact of it all. And he felt a pop and he felt the burn go down his arm and he freaked out. So everything kind of got flubbed, you know, like the finish that we didn't really get to celebrate. I mean, a uh, quick finish after that. Penta pins AR Fox, you know, new champions with no celebration, obviously. I mean, we strike. He was stretched out, man. It was pretty scary. Pretty scary. I mean, this is one of the biggest stars in the entire world right now. And he's at your show getting stretchered out. So I stretched him to the back. We got him to the back. Uh, he was moving. He was okay. He was very scared. We stabilized him with a neck brace. Paramedics were on their way. And uh, we were all with him. Everybody was really concerned. The whole ro- you know, team was there. The roster was there. Sammy and everybody. And uh, ambulance came. They did the tests on him. He's able to move his fingers, toes, move around and everything. But obviously, you don't want to be take a risk. Long story short, though, went to the hospital. Danny Daniels, AW owner, went with him. And it's a muscle contusion, pretty bad muscle contusion. Nothing broken, just a bad muscle contusion. And uh, he just needs to take it easy for for a couple of weeks. So I know he's got impact tapings this week. I don't know how they'll work around it. But uh, he missed the House of Glory spot the next day. I think Sammy ended up teaming with Pentagon. It was like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. But, uh, yeah, man, he was uh, – it was scary. I got. I got to admit, man, we were all pretty scared for him. He's a. He's a really, really great dude, and we were scared that it was a neck thing because he said he felt. I, he's like, I feel a compression in my chest. That's never a good thing, but uh, luckily he was able to move everything, so there was no paralysis, and he's gonna be all right. Well, he's gonna be just. He's taking a little time like off. To wish him uh, a speedy, speedy recovery. Uh, one of our tag team champions, Trent. Absolutely. I mean, that's Ray Phoenix, man. That's yes. one of our guys. Now let's talk about the match here, though. Lucha Brothers versus LAX, Trent. Hell of a match. Uh, you have to mention the longest reign in Impact or TNA wrestling history as far as the tag team championships go. 261 days Ortiz and Santana held the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championships for 261 days, Trent. That is a big statistic right there. And that reign has come to an end. But I got to say, Trent, there is no other team worthy of taking that reign than Penta and Phoenix. Won't you agree, Trent? We don't agree on a lot, but we can agree on that. I agree with you. I mean, who who else, right? Who else could take dethrone them? Now it comes down to who's, who can dethrone the Lucha Brothers. And you know I mean? what who, happens with LAX now? You know, what happens? And Trent, also, we have to mention, we were wrong. We swore that Conan was going to turn on LAX as a result of this. Now, obviously, that still can happen, but I don't know if it would make sense to now. I, Trent, what, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Tell me where your head's at. I think uh, I think Conan still turns. Still, Enjoying, still. You think like... Still turns. I think he yeah. might even have more of a reason to turn now. Now it's like, ah, you know, my, my boys are losers. I don't yeah. need them anymore. I think he definitely turns. LAX turns heel. Uh, he turns on them, and LAX kind of not turns heel, but LAX kind of gets lost, and they don't know what to do, and they kind of got. Maybe leads to them, you know, finding their attitude again. Yeah, kind of they they're shuffled back down the card, and you know, new challengers coming up. So you know, they got to work their way back up. Kind of gets LAX. They don't they don't know what to do with themselves now. They're lost. And you could bring Kingston back in as a result of that. I, I call me crazy, Trent. I think you could still put Kingston back with LAX in the future. Hundred percent. Because he he warned them of Conan. Who warned them of Conan all those times? Kingston. If it's Conan easy. turns it's on easy. LAX, you have to bring Kingston back. He's it's a, it's a simple math equation. I mean, why wouldn't you bring Kingston back? It, it, it makes sense. 
makes total sense. And uh, another chapter of LAX headed by Kingston. I mean, but that, that's fantasy booking, Trent. Those are just some fan predictions. But uh, give credit where it's due. LAX versus the Lucha Brothers. Uh, match of the year contender, Trent. Would you say so? Oh, totally. And it's only February. It's only 200%, February, Trent. Man. It's only February. Impact is banging out those classics. Uh, hell of an episode, Trent. Wrapping everything up here on the podcast Hell of an episode. Uh, any final thoughts, Trent, on this edition of Impact Wrestling? That's what I finally figured it out, Trent. We're just going to have our final thought. We never knew what we were going to do. Some weeks we'd give it a rating. Some weeks I think we might have even given it a thumbs up. This week, Trent, the final thought. Do you have any final thoughts on the show we just broke down and dissected? I'm going to say my final thought is it was a uh, – it was a – a show built to a main event with uh, furthering of all others. It was, it was, I think it was a, su- a successful show. It, it, it gave me exactly what I wanted to see as a fan. I wanted to see a badass main event that was hyped up for weeks. And it's a, a show that delivered for sure. For sure. Delivered. For sure. Uh, Next definitely... week is going to be the big payoff, right? Next week we have uncaged. We got a, a lot of uh, the card announced already, but Trent, I am not sure. I want to, Ask you, you would know. Is Uncaged the final episode in Mexico? The grand finale? That I don't know. I I think so. I'm not positive. I thought that Uncaged is going to be in Las Vegas. I think Because they're in Vegas starting. Oh, you're right. Maybe it might be the last one from Mexico. And then we go well, to Well, they Vegas. have the AAA guys. So I'm assuming yeah, next yeah, yeah, week yeah. they're still in Mexico. That should be the... Uh, you're right, the and, it, and then it's after that is when we're going to be in Vegas. So yeah, you're right. So so yeah, far so that, we have announced the trend for Uncaged. We've got uh, Team AAA versus Team Impact. That's uh, Sammy, Eddie, Eli, and Falaba of all people up against uh, wow four guys from AAA whose names I'm not even going to attempt to guess because uh, Impact did not put their names on the flyer. Trent, Trent, off oh, the top it. of your head, do you know who Team AAA is? Psycho Clown, Vikingo. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, they got you. Oh man, I oh I got I got them written down here. Well, last second. What, what, what am I doing? I cross I said promotional it wrestling is confusing, Trent. I said it earlier in the show. Vikingo, Puma King, Psycho Clown, and Aerostar. That's who it was. Okay, okay. And then also we have uh, Sammy Callahan tells all. There's a graphic that says that with Rich Swan in the background. So. We're going to get another chapter in the Sammy and Rich story, Trent. It's got you on the edge of your seat, and we'll see what's good with that. And then, again, Trent, again, we have Ty Valkyrie versus Tessa. How many times are we going to see that match? How yeah, many? This match, is, this match is going on. What's this left? is a feud of, what's left? feud of 2019. I don't know what's left. I don't know. We got a lot going I don't know. on. I, I think feud. that's maybe some old-school booking philosophy. Back in the day, it was cool to do that, and you know, at, at during big feuds, have the guys go against each other over and over and over. I don't know, I don't know where they're going with that. Uh, I definitely see Tessa getting the knockouts championship back from Taya somewhere down the line. But while you're in Mexico, it's good to have Taya as champion because let's face it, Mexico loves Wera Loca. Yeah, they love. They do love wear a little yes, bit, a yes. lot. She's and then Trent, there. and then we have our main event announced. It's going to be that four way that we talked about here on the show: Johnny Impact, Brian Cage, Killer Cross versus Moose. All four of them. That's right. Johnny versus Brian versus Killer versus Moose. Whole gang in this biatch. Trent, who's your money on? Who's your money on that one? I think I'm going with man. I'm going with uh with Cross. I am going with Cross, and I think Cage continues to get screwed because he's 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 getting screwed. Cage gonna get screwed. Cross takes the belt. We're off to the races in Las Vegas. Here well, we go. You know what, Trent? I think that's a good call. However, I think there's gonna be some shenanigans. I I don't think it's gonna be a clean finish, and I think uh. Mr. Johnny Impact is going to retain the championship uh, in this case because I feel like if he didn't, somebody would have spoiled it for us already. Uh, We have problems with the spoiler rats. 
I think somebody might have uh, would have spoiled it for us already. So I'm going to be safe and guess Johnny Impact. But if Johnny Impact loses next week, I'll have faith in the internet wrestling community again because that means something major happened and nobody spoiled it for me. So my, my guess is Johnny Impact. But Trent, I would like to see Killer Cross get that gold because Killer Cross is just the ultimate right now in professional wrestling across the board. You know, Trent, when I was watching this episode, had a funny moment. Uh, somewhere in this episode, uh, it was actually Killer Cross and Moose's backstage promo. Um, my dad, who hasn't enjoyed wrestling in many, many years, he was captivated by Killer Cross's promo work. Now, usually, he'll just walk by, you know, the wrestling on the TV and just laugh at it. He's not into it. But Killer Cross's words... Made my dad stop and enjoy the promo. Really? That's how you know. This guy can translate to a casual audience. He has the it factor. He's got it in the ring. He's got the look. He can talk better than anybody. And he can back it up in the sense that he can carry that character on his Twitter account. You know, it's not like somebody's writing shit for him and he's good at regurgitating it. The guy knows how to... uh, I, I don't know what to call it. Like, he's just like... Sammy Callahan in the sense that he never turns it off. Literally, he never turns it off. So I just think that Killer Cross is uh, proving himself week by week as the top guy in all of professional wrestling. And it would be an act of injustice if Impact doesn't capitalize on him now and give him the championship. Now, Brian Cage is definitely due for it down the line, but you're going to keep screwing him. We're going to keep pushing that. Keep screwing Cage. And I would like to see Killer Cross get the belt. Nothing against Moose. Just don't think it's Moose's time right now. Yeah, not yet. I don't know if Moose is. There's just too much before him, you know, to, for him to get that belt. They could they could just, I mean, you could twist it and, and put it on Moose. I mean, That's what I like about Impact is that it's unpredictable, man. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is unpredictable. I mean, they that's could right. throw us for a complete loop and Moose ends up with this belt. And, and then it's like, nobody fucking gets it. Like, yeah, man, neither Cage or Cross. The two obvious choices didn't get it. Now what? You know, I think I love that about Impact, that they keep you guessing for sure. That's right. That's right. And Impact Tribe, Impact Loungers, let us know right now in the comments. Obviously, before the episode airs Friday, who are you predicting walks away with the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship at the result of this match? Is it going to be Johnny Impact? Is it going to be Brian Cage? Is it going to be Killer Cross? Is it going to be Money Moose? Who knows? Let us know right now in the comments. Trent, we've done it all. I think it's finally time to put the podcast to bed here and let everybody go. All right, well, let's get the plugs in, Kyle. The plugs. we got to get the plugs going. Plug it in, plug it in. All right, guys, you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spotify. Also available on YouTube at the Impact Lounge, as well as the Total Nonstop Impact channel, which where there is a simultaneous, a simulcasted playlist of what you're seeing on the Impact Lounge uh, featuring Kyle and I here. You can also connect with us on social media at We Talk Impact on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, follow us, get a hold of us, you know, interact with us. We love talking to you guys. Uh, you can also uh, make sure, because it's a favor we want. I want. I need you guys to do me a favor. Do us a favor. If you use any of those podcasting apps, you know, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, whatever it is, throw us a rating, throw us a review. It helps us get seen by more people, by more Impact fans and iTunes the more ratings we got, the more we get seen. Guys, it takes two seconds. If you have an, an iPhone, you, you look us up in the uh, in the iTunes store and just throw us a rating. It'll get us up there, man. So definitely help us out. We appreciate all the people who have so far, but definitely subscribe to us on YouTube. I mean, get all the numbers in. It doesn't cost anything. It's all free. So we appreciate that, guys. Uh, Kyle, you are now on Twitter solo, man. You want to tell people where they can find you? KL underscore TNI. Follow me on the Twitter sphere right now, please. Boom. Please, loungers. Follow him. Get, get him some numbers, guys. That's numbers. Right. I'll follow, follow you me. back. He'll follow you back. You follow me at Vanilla Joke on Twitter. And uh, my band is Hemi, H E M I. 
And you can find us at hemimusic.com. That's some of the music you've heard on the show. And, uh, Kyle, I think that's it, man. That We have plugged everything. We have went over everything. God damn it. Anything else that I missed? The Hey Party people, what's going on? Good night, everybody. That's what Good you Good night, everybody. See you next week. The Hey Party people, what's going on? Yeah.